How do you renew your returning resident visa, RRV, if you did not spend two out of five years in Australia? Recently, we've got quite a lot of candidates who approached me asking this question. They told me, thank you very much for getting us permanent visa. However, myself, I'm still working in my home country. I'm not able to come and spend two years in Australia. Now, how do you meet this requirement? Now, as I mentioned in my previous videos, once your global talent visa is approved, this application is then finalized. You are Australia permanent resident. Now, Australia visa has one very special condition, which is everybody, everyone's visa has a entry facility, which allowing you to use the same visa to enter Australia in a certain period of time. So even if you've got a permanent visa any, uh, under any of the visa subclasses or programs, any, okay, you're subject to this. And the travel facility for Australia Global Tunnel Visa is five years, which means you can only use this visa, that letter, to enter Australia within five years of your visa approval. So within your five years of your visa approval, not from the date, the calculations, it's calculate from the date your permanent visa was approved. And if you check your visa grant letter, the conditions, you're able to see either on page one or page two, you're able to see that you are actually one of, uh, that's an expiry date of that. So expiry date, it doesn't mean that your visa expired on by that date. It is actually means that your travel facility will be expired on that day. So you will need to renew your travel facility. This travel facility, therefore, allowing you to travel, give you another length of that next travel facility. Now, in order to renew a travel facility, you need to, to be either meet one of the requirements. One, that is spent in Australia, two years out of that five years period in Australia. Out of five years, that five years calculate from the date of the visa approval, not calculate from the date of your first entry. So bear in mind. So if you actually forgot, you know, to activate visa, that's the reason I encourage candidates to, you know, to activate as soon as possible. If you forgot to activate and then you thought, well, that actually the date from the, the calculation on five years, the calculate from the date, I enter Australia, that's wrong interpretation. Because you thought, well, as long as if I come here on the fifth year, then I have another five year to calculate. No, it just doesn't happen like that. You have to really think about calculating from the date of a visa approval. This is actually on a visa ground letter. I'm going to show you one of the visa ground letter, uh, not mentioning client's name, but uh, you're able to see that it is that date. The expiry date is calculated from the date of your visa expiry date okay visa sorry uh from the date of calculate from the date your visa is approved it now i mentioned the two of requirements say one two out of five, one, out of five years or if you spend less than five years uh, two years so that's it that's a that's either two years or less than two years now if you have spent two years in australia regardless of that time that your visa approved when you were in Australia. So when you were in Australia, it's really straightforward. Again, calculate from the date your visa is approved it. Now, if you're not in Australia that not, not time and then uh, you have not been spending two years out of five, or you are unlikely to able to meet these two years requirement. What do you do? It's you need to establish Australia ties. Okay. Now we have a community, uh, I explained really well and there's a PowerPoint you can download. If you hit subscribe my channel and then hit one of the links below, you're able to find more information from us. Now in summary, now you need to establish or share ties. Or share ties, it has to be interpreted in literal meaning. Meaning, what do you think about common sense? What does it consider of shared ties? It can be culture, it can be employment, it can be business, it can be family, right? 
So family ties, for instance, you can say if you have a child who's studying in Australia, that even you didn't spend two years, you can say, I have a child studying in Australia, I have family ties. Now, of course, the primary ties is family ties. Among the family ties, children's spouse, the direct family links, they are the primary ties of your family ties, right? Make sense? Children and your own, you know, your wife and her husband, uh, they are your same family unit. So this is the strongest ties ever. So if you have a child, you're, for the first five years, you should be able to get a uh, renewal. The renewal, the length of renewal, though, it will be just one year. Now, if you don't have that, and um, the second secondary level of family ties will be, of course, your parents, right? Your parents, the same line of siblings, right? Direct siblings. And among that, next one will be probably cousins or parents uh, in law, you know, that's some of that. Then consider who is, consider who is the main applicant. So family ties is a primary ties or shared ties. The secondary shared ties will be, of course, employment. Now, what's considered employment? It's that if you do want to come back to Australia, applying that and you have a job offer from Australia company and you want to come back and work for that company, that's very strong because they need to allow you to come. You are a shared permanent resident. It just happens to be that your travel facility expired, then you are no longer able to return on that visa. So once you have a job offer, pretty much that's satisfied. Okay, but you say, I don't have a job offer. How about if I have a potential opportunity? That is good too. For instance, your future employer might say, I'm not sure about, you know, I want you to come here for an interview. This is secondary. It's not concrete, but you have something promising ongoing, right? A third level of employment ties can be something like that. You have Australia colleagues or Australia company. They want you to attend conference or course meetings in person. And then you are required to come back on that one. Of course, when you consider that, you actually have already spent some time with them in the past few years. So it won't be very hard to demonstrate that, isn't it? So let's consider employment ties. Now, third level of that will be business ties. That's, I think it's quite important of what people, you know, normal understanding of business and the, the interpretation of business ties within the legal interpretation. Now, business ties can be something like this. You actually own a business in Australia, a big corporate, and then that's your business. That's normal people's understanding. Now, in Australia, business can be one man army, okay? It can be just your own company with your own director and a secretary. As long as you have director and secretary to be registered, you do not have to work for this company, right? You can be a comp director of a company without working for the company. Does it make sense? Of course, if you're working for the company, then you can work offshore as well. You can work outside Australia, still be director of the company. Of course, it makes sense that you are the director and are working in Australia. However, it doesn't have to be like that way. You can own a company, but you don't have to manage the company. That is still the business ties. Okay. Now, one man's done company can be various types. It can be something like you have a consulting firm and then you have one client paying you, right? It makes sense. Also, it can be a summer who you are the contractor, but you register company in order to get paid, right? This is the second type of company, contractual type of company, and then it can be, you will have your own ABM. Of course, company structure varies. It can be a uh, sole trader, it can be company, you know, limited proprietary. It can be family trust. It can be trust company. It can be partnership. So your accountant will be the best advisor to give you the advice what kind, how to structure your business. So business, it's one type of thing. What is considered business? Very simple. Now that you trade for your service or product in order to get payment. That's it. That's the only thing you do in business. You trade the time, effort, by sending product service to a, a someone third party in order to get paid. 
that is considered business. Employment is considered you trade your time in order to get paid. The time will be based on your expertise, your knowledge, or your experience, isn't it? So business can be very wide. It doesn't have to be the many of I know I have big big business. Um, do I have that strong? No. Under the immigration law for the Australia business tax, it, you you're not required to demonstrate that company is huge. Of course, they should, the bet the big the better. However, that's no definition what's considered big, isn't it? That is no definition. All right, that's a human understanding or common understanding what's considered big. Now, if you have it once uh, one man army kind of business, you can actually use the business to manage various support business, you know, business activities. It can be, as I mentioned, consulting firm. It can be someone who's selling, you know, uh, any of product. It doesn't have to be related with the initial global talent application. Now, once you've got global talent application approved, that's no visa condition. You're settled. Okay. We have done the work for you. You're happy now, okay? So the, the you you need to renew your returning resident visa, and that business renew the business activity does not has to be hundred percent associated with what previous your promise because you have changed your mind. So I'm not saying you have to change your mind. I'm saying it can be because you change your mind as long as you explain that. But you don't have to explain because that's no requirement. You just need to say, "I have a business activity." Now, business activity can be something like you have a company to manage your properties. That is happening, right? Under under no some countries, the property can only be owned by a person or two persons or three persons. It can be only by owned by people, and that's most common understanding. Now, of course, in Australia, that's you can own by people, right? Uh, if you're a primary resident, that's your own home, 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 home. That it's owned by you, right? So, or your spouse, or between you and other people, your relatives. It can be between you and under your business, you know, business partner. It can be people. Um, it can be owned by a corporate. It can be owned by a trust. Okay, different entity. It can be owned by any of the forms that's. Considered as eligible to have the title. Now, in this regard, for instance, you may you should be able to have a, com a, a company title owned by a trust. Now, in this case, uh, this regard, the trust family trust, dix, dix, family trust therefore will be the own own only entity, the benefit only entity of the uh, of the of, of sorry family home or your rental home. Um, of course, there is a various the whole houses, our uh, properties in Australia. I'll, I'll explain my next video. But now we just focus on co consider family, also consider of uh, property, uh, sorry, business related ties. Now, if a company, which is preparatory company, which is corporate property, will be trustee, a bit confused, sorry, trustee of your trust, who might be owning the title. In that regard, as you, you are the director of the trustee company or beneficiary of the trust, then you can really establish, consider or share business ties. Okay, so share business ties again. It doesn't have to be a corporate. It doesn't have to be the um, big size of the company. It can be very small. It can be a company managing your own investment properties. It can be anything like selling. Products that it's not. It can be like selling product of uh, socks. It can be anything like that. Now the activity, it, the definition of activity doesn't. It's not. Sorry, the activity that remains in the shared business business ties is not defined. Therefore, it can be any as long as it's legal within the jurisdiction. Okay. Now that will be the kind of uh, ties you you can establish. The most hardest ties will be culture ties, because if someone it's not because they don't they don't establish culture ties. It's if you don't if you did not spend enough time in Australia, it will be very hard to say you have a culture ties. Culture ties can be example like your membership of your membership of your church, your membership of your participant in a sport. Uh, club, it can be a. Uh, it's about you are representing a culture and a 
organization you share. It can be sports, you know, culture or volunteer or anything to do with the community, organization, um, these kind of ties. Now, culture ties can be culture ties if you spend some time in Australia, but if you fairly, you know, spend three months, probably it's going to be, you know, factually hard to get it. Now, I mentioned four ties here. One is that family ties, uh, and then second one is employment ties, the third one is business ties, for fourth one is culture ties. If you have one element within that, it can be explained multiple times. For instance, you might have a child live in Australia or study in Australia that is considered a family ties. Then a child will be probably living in your own home, and then you have Australia, and that home home is actually owned by your own trustee company. Then your trustee company is managing home and managing that. Then it's considered business ties. You can have actually come here for conference once a year with attending conference in Australia, then can be employment ties. You can actually have, uh, you know, when you come here, you attend church, it can be uh, culture ties. The longer you absent from Australia, the more evidence you have to provide. Make it sense? If you actually spend at least one year out of five years, it will be probably, we probably just need one business and your family ties, that would be sufficient. You, if you only stay one day out of five years, Shreya, you can imagine that what the reason because you because your travel, the length of your staying can be considered ties, isn't it? So you will need a stronger case. The longer you absent from Australia, the more evidence you provide you need to provide. The first five years will be always the easiest way to apply returning resident visa. Why? Because you are just changing your mind or the circumstance change. You can really explain a lot. So the, for five years, I wouldn't have any trouble. And if you have any trouble using that, please, you know, hit subscribe our channel and then make sure that you like the button and then you'll receive notification about our updates about how to actually prove that. But the next five five years, which is in the 10 year role, if you hardly spend a day or three days in Australia, or probably spend three days in a, in a 10 years role, that's going to be a bit hard, isn't it? Uh, probably if you never spend in Australia, or just three days out of 10 years, my question would be probably you don't need Australia permit visa anyway, right? The government will ask the same question, well, you didn't come, so well, why do you want to, why do you want Australia permit visa, right? So five, five years, I won't be worrying too much as long as you give me something. But for 10 years, you want to plan very, very in advance. You can actually plan in advance to have the same benefit uh, by establishing some ties, which I'll be explaining this in detail in my next video. Subscribe my channel to receive notification for my videos. Thank you.